Surprise! Brett was right. AMD might have some faster GPUs for us, but don't worry. Intel's got some snarky malarkey to talk about with AMD, and NVIDIA wants to turn your computer into an easy bake oven. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're going to be starting off today squeaking this table. My goodness. Let's see if I can do it again. <laughs> No, not really. It's just it's a once and done thing. Just like I think the 6500 XT will be. It's going to be a once and done. And once people get their hands on it, they likely will realize that this is a terrible card that AMD probably should have just kept in laptops. But, you know, a lot of you tended to disagree with me being like, Brad Peace Express won't bottleneck. The 6500 XT. That's the accent I have for my commenters. Well, guess what? There's some uh, testing being done out there and just like I suspected because PCI Express 3.0 did bottleneck the ARC 5500 XT four gigabyte version when Hardware Unbox actually did some sleuthing, they found that PCI Express 4.0 by eight was up to 171% faster than PCI Express 3.0 by four. By testing the RX 5500 XT and then limiting its PCI Express bandwidth. The 6500 XT isn't going to be quite like this because it can't even go up to PCI Express 4.0 by 8. As you can see, it doesn't matter in all games. Resident Evil Village was only a 2% difference. Formula One 2021 was a 6% difference, but on average, it was between 30 and 50% different between each game with PCI Express 4.0. So great benchmarkers testing it out and kind of validating confirmation biasing my speculation on the 6500 XT that it likely will face severe bottom next if it's put on a PCI Express Gen 3 system, which is basically everybody who's going to buy this card. Unless you're on a 5 or 600 series Intel motherboard or you're on B550 and not using a 5600G or a 5700G, you're going to be on PCI Express 3.0 and your card's going to suck. Obviously, there are a few things that can potentially redeem it, like the fact that it's on RDNA 2 architecture, unlike the 5500 XT and that is also going to have infinity cache, but it likely still will be considerable worse than it otherwise could have been because of AMD limiting these PCI Express bandwidth. But don't worry, all right? It's going to be fine because you're just going to pay between 350 and 375 euro for this, which is well over $400. Don't you worry, my friends, okay? You want a bottleneck piece of crap $200 GPU? Easy peasy. Pay me 400 bucks. You get it right now. That's according to the sales that are actually happening right now of, of these cards. It's bad. And listen, I can already hear the comments down below. Below. What would you rather AMD do to release new GPUs? Re-release the 5500 XT on six nanometers. The easy peasy, done, okay? I don't I don't know if they can on RDNA 1, but that's a bet. Even, not even on six nanometers. Just freaking re-release the 5500 XT, sell it for 200 bucks, be like it's brand new because we say it is, okay? Because that's essentially what they're gonna be doing with the next generation of GPUs. We've got indication that the next GPUs from AMD are gonna be a refresh of the RX 6000 series, but faster this time because of faster memory bandwidth. This is coming out thanks to a well-known GPU leaker indicating that AMD might refresh its GPU lineup to have 18 gigabit per second GDDR6 memory. And that's kind of it. All right, so it's just gonna be called the XX50 model. So you got that RX 6900, <laughs> RX 6950, baby. You got that RX 6600, RX 6650, baby. And now, cause you can see all of these are on 16 gigabit memory bandwidth. So it's it's paltry, it's garbage. It's something that you shouldn't even have anymore. The only thing that has 18 gigabits per second, which is something that nobody has is the Radeon RX 6900 XT liquid cooled edition. You don't have that, but you can get a 6950 XT, baby. 6850. 50 XT, baby. All right, you can get all the 50s you want, and it's gonna be just incrementally faster for you at more expensive than the previous generation was for very little performance gain. It's a great year we're living in, 2022, the year of us sacrificing our dollars for nothing at all. But AMD is looking to give you a free feature in RAMP. Okay, we're gonna ramp up this segment talking about AMD's RAMP and essentially it's Intel's XMP platform, which is their memory overclocking stuff that makes it so that the memory spec on the memory kit you buy runs really fast and really tight timings, good and fast and good and what you want on the, the memory. Brett's 
describing this perfectly in very layman's terms, and that's essentially what AMD's ramp is going to be, and hardware info indicating that there's preliminary support for that rolling out, and it looks like AMD might actually have some competition to Intel in that regards. Now let's ramp on into the new segment of me slapping tables and talking about crypto stocks. Bitcoin having another slight down day, down 2% to be at $42,000, under an $800 billion market cap right now. Ethereum also down 4.12% to be at $31.93, under $400 billion market cap. And Dogecoin down 2.98% to 17 cents. Just not a good day all around in the crypto stocks market. Taking a look at the meme stocks, GameStop closing down another almost 5% to sit at 116.65. AMC closing down a little under half a percent to be at 2057. I think at the end of January, unless there's a new rally that happens and there's more shorting that's good, the, the meme stocks are just gonna drop off this segment altogether. February 1st, no more meme stonks. It'll be dead, it'll have been over a year, not worth talking about anymore, at least in my opinion. But Walmart thinks NFTs and the metaverse and uh, Web3 and cryptocurrency are worth talking about. Number one, because they're buzzwords. Number two, because there's mind share. Number three, because there's money to be made. And number four, because they believe their consumers are suckers. And that's exactly what's going on right now because there's USPTO filings from Walmart dictating the fact that they're looking into things with cryptocurrency and NFT and there's trademarks surrounding it. And Walmart saying that they're continuously exploring how new technologies might influence shopping. Routinely filed trademark as part of that process. Don't you want a girlfriend that's hot like me? But number two, don't you want a Walmart branded gaming PC, all right, that comes with an NFT of that smiley little rollback mascot that they had, all right? The little bouncy smiley face, okay? Give me an NFT of that whenever I buy a PC from you, Walmart. I can't can't wait to cool down my PC by looking at this shiny new NFT that I got until you take down the URL that was hosting it and then I still have the NFT but I don't have the thing that the NFT was pointing to and then I'm gonna be sad. But in case you don't believe Walmart's implementation of the Metaverse Web 3.0, just take a look of this digital shopping experience they wanna bring to VR. Look at this. You could go physically shopping in a Walmart store in VR. And by physically, I mean metaphysically. Meta, kinda, it's, you know, it's gonna be great. The Metaverse, grocery shopping in the Metaverse gonna be cray cray according to this 20 plus year CNBC and NBC News Peabody, Emmy, Murrow, and DuPont award winner as well as Wall Street Journal alum. Somehow this is a good thing. Somehow this is better than simply going to walmart.com and being like, oh, what's that? Canada Dry Ginger Ale? Click add to cart. Oh wow, that was so fast. I'd rather physically walk there in the metaverse and then find it on the shelf instead of just Googling searching on the freaking Walmart web. Sorry, sorry. Woo! Brent was coming out. Brent's gonna roll himself back. We're not gonna go that far. All right, NFTs trigger back. There are certain NFT implementations that I understand. I've seen some pretty cool things where the NFTs are tokens that verify authenticity that allow you to like unlock your smart home like door lock. That's pretty cool as like a secondary factor authentication that could potentially work as not, not the primary or like it's the primary means, but then there's like a physical backup one that has the code. Anyways, there's some cool stuff with NFTs. Walmart's not it. And Amazon was saying that Visa cards weren't it. They were gonna get rid of them as of January 19th. That was according to them back in November saying that, hey, Visa, you suck. And they not wanted to do it because Visa charges too high of fees. And this has nothing to do with the fact that Amazon's own credit card is made by MasterCard. It has 0% to do with that and the fact that they cut a deal. Nothing. They would never do anything like that. Well, according to Amazon now, that likely won't go into effect because they're working it out with Visa, which means that everybody's gonna make more money and could still continue to shop happy on amazon.co.uk, my friends, and you can continue to do that on your Safari web browser in case you wanna, you know, leak your browser histories and all of your Google account info because of a new vulnerability that was discovered in Safari due to an index DB framework exploit that's happening that allows things to cross pollinate and give you data that you shouldn't otherwise have. It was reported to Apple as of November 28th. They haven't responded, so it was reported to the public. And so just don't, don't use Safari, don't use a Mac. That did you know that if you don't go on the internet, your passwords can't be stolen? The more you know. 
And did you know that if you release one brand new architecture every five years, you can then kind of, I guess, metaphysically slam dunk on your opponents by talking a real big game, according to Pat Gelsinger, CEO of Intel, where he says that AMD is now in the rear view mirror. They will never again be in the windshield, okay? Because they, the Alder Lake has come out and things are great now. Alder Lake, all of a sudden, boom, we back in the game. We are back in the game, excuse me. Horrible uh, grammar structure there. AMD in the rear view mirror in clients, that is the consumer market, he adds, and never again will they be in the windshield. We are just leading the market, okay? As long as every five years we remember to innovate things or like, you know, we don't forget to oust CEOs who are uh, having infidelity with people that they are working for them. You know, as long as that, none of that happens, they're never again gonna be in the witch. This is just like, really, Pat Gelsinger? This is probably something that's gonna, I, I, I'm gonna guess is gonna continue to crop up with the CEO of Intel because he's continuously done this over the past few months. He talked a huge game against TSMC and to the US government being like, oh, look at all of these foreign companies doing all of this fabrication. Look at the invest in Intel. We have domesticated fabrication. Taiwan, that's a risky move. You wanna invest in Taiwanese infrastructure? Mm -mm -mm, bad idea. And then TSMC is like, dude, we're making your GPUs. You're you're like trying to sign deals with us for like three and four nanometers, and you're just gonna you're gonna say that publicly. And then he had to actually like have a discussion with TSMC because he was publicly calling all of the other co companies out for the exact same thing they were doing. And it's just it seems like Pat Gelsinger, at least from the public facing persona that I'm gathering, likes to talk a lot. And even if it's justified, Alder Lake is good. Man, this can come back to bite you in the butt if you don't watch your words carefully, saying they're never gonna be again in the windshield. Come on, man. Like, Intel's gone through some rough periods. I'm sure that you would have said that back when they were on Skylake, because Skylake was a great advancement. AMD was on Bulldozer, and look what happened. You got nothing for five whole years, and AMD continued to trudge ahead, and then Intel was stuck with stagnating 14 nanometers, and again, scandal at the at the CEO level my goodness like show some humility man and I'm gonna show this next article in stark contrast to that because Xbox versus PlayStation I will admit that Xbox Game Pass is a brilliant move by Microsoft on how they're doing things and Phil Spencer says that hey if PlayStation wants to copy us and do something that's like Game Pass, then that's the right answer. I don't mean to sound like we've got it all figured out, but I think the right answer is allowing your customers to play the games they wanna play where they wanna play them and giving them the choice about how they build their library and being transparent with them about what our plans are in terms of our PC initiatives and our cross-gen initiatives and other things. So when I hear others doing things like Game Pass or coming to PC, it makes sense to me because I think that's the right answer. And then in regards to whether or not he's patting himself on the back for Sony making this move, saying, I don't really look at it as validation. I actually, when I'm talking to our teams, I talk about it as an inevitability. So for us, we should continue to innovate, continue to compete because the things that we're doing might be advantages that we have in the market today, but they're just based on us going first, not that we've created something that no one else can go create. It feeds our energy on what are the next things that we should be working on as we continue to build out the things that we've done in the past, because I think the right answer is to ship great games, ship them on PC, ship them on consoles, ship them on cloud, make them available day one in the subscription. I expect that's what our competitor will do. My goodness! The humility as well as bravado. He's not dismissing everything great that Xbox has done, but he's just like, listen, yes, other people are gonna do it. I want Sony to do this kind of stuff because it pushes us to be better and to outpace them. That's what it looks like to be an industry leader and have thought of being like, okay, what's best for our consumer? We wanna deliver on that. I like it when my competitor does that too because it brings the game for everybody. Intel over here being like, nah, AMD ain't worth nothing, all right? They might be outside selling us in servers and gaining market share, and they might be gaining market share in the, in the regular desktop consumer, but don't you worry, we're somehow gonna undo all of the distrust that we've built into the consumer over the last six years, all right? Intel, guys, talk less of a game.
please, because you just might get Milky Weed, okay? AMD's Ryzen 7 5800X 3D is now appearing in a database, at least benchmarked in, in a benchmark that's not typically used. Milky Way at home database is now popping up with the CPU showing up. It can do a whole lot of folding. That's generally what Milky Way at home is for. It's kind of similar to folding at home, and it looks like it's performing about what we expected it to, which is good. Not, not really a benchmark to go off in terms of gaming performance. But NVIDIA's out here looking like they need to set a new benchmark for your power supply, okay? You thought 750 watts was good enough. You thought 850 watts was gonna keep you safe for the future. They said, nay, we're gonna take all of it. We're gonna slurp that juice up, okay? We're gonna be like freaking Jamie Foxx and Spider the Amazing Spider-Man 2 being all blue with power because the RTX 3090 Ti is posting that it's gonna require four 180 watts of power according to MSI spec sheet, which is just absolutely absurd. That's three eight pins, which can each deliver 150 watts. So that's 450 watts. And then you add on the 75 watts from the PCI Express power, maximum of 525 watts on the power delivery. And it's gonna consume like 90% of that, 480 watts. They're recommending at least a minimum of a thousand watt power supply to even have this GPU deign to enter your PC, okay? you thought it was sacred to have 900 watts no longer kilowatt or bust is my new nickname baby i'll go to end hot news on that yep that's where i'm landing it let me know what you thought of anything and everything i said today down below in the comments i'll see you tomorrow for the tech news toodaloo